Hi guys, so here we are uh, looking at circuits and it may be a bit of time since you've really looked at circuits or it could be that you haven't really done much as in your previous years. So we're going to go over just what a um, circuit diagram looks like, series and parallel circuits and what current and voltage are like. So those are the things that I would expect you may have learnt in previous years. Um, and it is the knowledge that you will need to have in year 12 electricity. So the first thing is that um, if we're going to draw how electrical components are wired together, we need to use some symbols. A very typical one that you'd probably think without really realising is that a wire would be drawn with a straight line that's um, not scratchy, it's not wiggly, it's just a clear straight line. And when lines join, um, you would actually show them in a, I guess, in a square or a rectangle. So lines would be coming at 90 degrees from each other. Um, and then we've got other things as well. So we have like a switch. A switch that's open is easy to find because it's got like a little bit of a, I call it like a bit of a drawbridge. But when a switch is closed, you want to kind of make it obvious that that's not just a wire. So you kind of can add these little dots on each side. A light bulb is a circle with an X in it, and that should be pretty familiar to you. And then we have the difference between a cell and a battery. So a cell is just a single unit of power supply, whereas a battery are multiple cells hooked up together. So if you've ever had like your TV remote, it needed to have like two batteries in it, right? And a single AA battery could be considered as like one cell. So when you have a device that needs multiple ones of those hooked up together um, to make it a bit more of a bigger power supply, then you would use the battery. Um, I kind of alternate between both because they essentially mean the same thing. They just mean some sort of power source. And then we have a voltmeter and an ammeter. We will look at those later. Um, you may not really see much, um, but a fuse is typically just a very thin wire encapsulated in some sort of ceramic or glass. So this is the diagram here for a fuse. Um, a resistor is something you will see. So a resistor is just anything that um, slows down electricity as it moves through. So you can get actual resistors that their job is just to slow down the electricity, just because the circuit has got too much electricity flowing through it, it could be dangerous. Or a resistor could also be like an appliance, like your TV, toaster, microwave. Um, some resistors you could change how much they are letting electricity flow through them. Um, one example could be, you know, like a dimmer switch on your lights. So a variable resistor is just a resistor of which you could alter how much um, electricity is able to flow through it. And so yeah, with diagrams, um, I always like to draw my battery up in the top, in the centre, but it doesn't actually matter where you locate um, each component, as long as you've got nice, neat straight lines joining everything together, and they are all um, coming at 90 degrees from each other. So we get this square or rectangle shape diagram. Cool. So we've talked about this in class already, but if you still need a refresher or you have not been in class, um, there's two ways you can wire components next to each other. So say light bulbs. You could put light bulbs, um, two light bulbs in a circuit, one coming after the other. So you have a wire from the power source around to the first light bulb, straight to the second light bulb and back. So that's a series um, arrangement. That means that each component comes one after the other, kind of like a TV series as episodes coming one after the other. Parallel is where each component, or maybe not each component, but components are in separate branches. And when we draw our circuit diagrams based on that kind of like, you know, square shape, each branch is going to have its own, um, I guess, horizontal line. And so one branch would be considered to be parallel next to the other branch. Uh, these circuits have got differences, and I like to think of electrical current, and I'll just put my finger on the line, and I will follow where the current can go. So from here, electricity can come um, out across the switch, and then down. It could go into this first light bulb and back, or it could go down into bulb two and back. Now, because this switch is here next to the power source, if that switch is open, um, no electricity can flow around that entire circuit. So that light, um, that switch there will control both of these lights simultaneously. All right, so what is 
current. Current is the easy one. Um, we're going to talk about what it is and how it works in series and in parallel. So current is um, how, if you stood in one place, if you're small enough to stand in the wire and watch all the electrons flowing past you, it would be how many electrons or how many charges are flowing past a certain point in one second. Uh, you may not actually have to have heaps, really depends on the material you're looking at. But um, it's kind of like if you were standing next to a river and it was flowing, you could say, well, how fast is this river flowing? Or how much water is going past? You'd say how many liters per second are going past this, this point? I also like to think of um, an analogy is that as well, if you have sheep in yards like this on the farm um, and they're all moving past you and you're counting them, you know, like how fast are they moving past you? The symbol for current is an I, really annoying. Um, I guess it means like intensity, or I don't know where the I comes from, to be honest. Um, and then current is measured in amperes or amps. So an amp is just saying one coulomb of charge is going past every second. That would equal one ampere. So it's really annoying that we've got different ways to think of it. We measure it in amps, that's fine. But if you actually ask what an amp is, one amp is one coulomb per second of charge flowing past the point. So in series, um, like you said, you follow with your finger and just like with these um, sheep in the yards, if they're all in one big loop and they're all being pushed around and they're all moving, um, they're actually probably going to all move at the same speed because they can't move faster than the person in front of them, right? And if they're all in a loop, they're all going to go at the same speed. So in a series circuit, the current is actually having to go through each part of that circuit and at each location, doesn't matter where you test that current, it would be the same all the way around. But in parallel circuits, you've got these separate branches and current will actually, just like water, if it were to um, split and go into two rivers, um, the current will split and go some in one current and some in one branch and some current in the other branch. How much current goes into each branch does depend on what each branch is like. We will talk about that later. But just um, understand that in series, current will be the same everywhere. In parallel, the current will split in each branch. So you'll find that on this um, slide, we've just got some numbers to, to prove it to you. So here we've got one um, series circuit where we've got 0 0.3 amps of current flowing through it. You'll find that no matter where you are on that circuit, the current has to go right through all of this. So everywhere you test, it would have the same current. Whereas for the parallel circuit, um, we've got 0 0.3 amps of current going in and out of the battery. Um, and then in each branch, we actually have only a fraction of that. Um, 0 0.05, 0 0.15 and 0.1, you'll notice that those numbers will all add up to give a total of 0 0.3 amps. So the total current coming from this battery is split up. It may be split up evenly, but um, now that you're in year 12, you'll find that there's probably going to be an uneven split here, depending on what is contained in each branch. Voltage is a bit more tricky, and this is why I wanted to make a video just to explain um, voltage. And it takes a couple of years actually of working with voltage to fully appreciate how it, how it is um, and what happens in series and parallel circuits. So I like to think of voltage as the push that electrons are getting from the battery. Um, and in, in order to push something, right, work has to be done, force times distance, yeah? So work being done also means that energy has to be put in to get these electrons to push. So the battery is providing the electrons with the energy to move around the circuit, and that energy is being used as a light bulb. So how much that is happening is voltage. So I like to think of voltage as the, as the push behind the electrons. Um, just like with the stockyards with the sheep, if you're in there um, pushing the sheep past, you're, you're making them move a bit faster and you're getting more sheep to go past and they have more speed as well when they're doing that. So the, the sheep themselves have got more energy as they're getting pushed past you. Um, it can also be considered or it's, it's often defined as potential difference and that often doesn't mean really that much. So we'll talk about what that does mean. So voltage is funny because the voltage has a symbol V and then it's measured in volts, symbol V. So like same, same. But one volt 
is actually saying, okay, well, one volt could be thought of if one joule of work was done by one coulomb of charge. So then we've got units here of um, JC minus one. You won't necessarily be asked that, but it could help you understand voltage. It's just it's the energy done or the energy contained or the energy that is able to be used by the um, charges. Um, we've talked about that. And so that potential difference is just saying, well, how much of that push has the charge got before it goes through a component and after it goes through a component? Because as the um, voltage gets used, there's going to be a difference. Okay, Just like with the sheep, if they go through to a dip tank or whatever, um, or they go over a bridge or something, they're going to have slightly different amount of energy before and after that. So the potential difference, I like to think of gravitational potential energy, okay, because we know that's potential. And this little boy here is sitting up the top of the slide, and he has more potential energy than the little girl who's come off at the bottom. Okay, so we don't really care where they are and how high the slide is. If you're looking at how much energy was used um, and how much work was done going down the slide, this you'd look at the difference between this boy and the little girl at the bottom. You'd say, okay, this boy has more potential energy at the top, but as he moves down, the further he moves down, the more is lost. So the greater the difference in potential. So it's a bit also like um, water going down a waterfall. Water at the top of a waterfall has a lot of gravitational potential energy. And as it goes down the waterfall, there becomes then a difference in how much gravitational potential energy water has at different levels of, say, like a tiered waterfall. Um, and so if we're looking at the water at the top of the waterfall with the most ability to do work, the most push behind it, the most potential, and then water at the middle of the waterfall with half as much push, half as much potential energy, half as much work being able to be done there, we could um, compare those two different levels of water and say, okay, this um, difference in potential is so much. And so when we talk about circuits, we're talking about voltage drop or the difference in the voltage across a component from one side of the component through to the other side of the component. So you'll notice that when we do take measurements for voltage, a voltmeter is put in parallel over top of a component. It's not put alongside a component in series. You wire in a voltmeter in parallel. But that, we'll do that later. We'll do that part later. So, oh, well, here's some diagrams anyway. So we'll have a look at this. Um, so in series, down here, sorry that my thing comes up, but we've got 12 volts of push from the battery. So we have kind of like 12 um, units of a push for each unit, for each um, coulomb of charges. It's pushed out of the battery with 12 joules of um, energy, I guess. And as it goes around the circuit, um, that has to be used in order for the charges to be able to move through each component or each resistor. So here you'll see um, the first one has, I think it was eight volts. Um, second resistor has one volt and the third one has three volts. So as the current moves through these three resistors, it has to use up some of its voltage to get through that. Just like water going down a waterfall uses up its gravitational potential energy to get from one level to the next level of a waterfall, um, the charges here have to use up some of their voltage in each resistor because they're all wired one after the other. So the total voltage um, where the battery is, is going to be equal to the individual voltages of each resistor. In parallel, it's different and it doesn't really make too much sense. It's a little bit um, counterintuitive. Um, but if you again get 12 volts of push from the battery, the charges will go through, but one single charge will only go through one branch before returning back to the battery. So it means that as it moves through the circuit, it only encounters whatever's in one branch. And so as it enters this branch, it's still got that 12 volts worth of push. 
Okay, so and again, another charge that's been pushed from the battery, one single charge may take this second route. Again, it's still going to have that 12 volts of push behind it, because it hasn't encountered anything yet until it gets into this second branch. And again, with the third. So it's really counterintuitive, because you'd like to think that these things would all add up to something, like they do for series. But what happens in a parallel circuit is that the voltage from the battery is actually identical to the voltage that goes through each branch. So here's a little bit of a table. This is what I have um, provided with my year 10s in the past. And this is um, a table that will help you. If you memorize this, at least it gives you something to refer back to. All of your circuit questions at some point will require you to know this. It will require you to know that in series circuits, the current is the same for all the points along that circuit, but the voltage is split between the components. Whereas in parallel, the current is split in the branches, but the voltage in each branch is the same as the voltage from the battery. So um, yeah, I just set up this kind of table like this. And you can see these like same, same different um, setup going on here. So I hope that helped. And if you do have any questions, check in with your teacher or check out your SciPad or Education Perfect. There are some really good videos on YouTube. Some of them can be pretty long. Some of them are designed for people who are obviously like um, apprentice electricians. But again, if you do want any um, help in the right direction, just go and see your teacher.